Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. And this segment is called Market Entry Strategy. Now, some might refer to this as GTM or Go to Market Strategy or just go to market. It's important that we differentiate between those two because go to market is sort of your initial launch market position, generally of an MVP or minimum viable product. But as soon as you were, use the word strategy, you tend to imply long term. So when I use the word strategy, I'm typically talking about a three to five year time frame plan. And so we'll differentiate quite significantly between these two terms that are often confused and mixed in the mass media and by the uninitiated entrepreneurs. But a first concept to really understand is that to be a startup launching, you have to be addressing a fairly narrow market. And this is counterintuitive. But you need to niche or die. And, and this is not terribly debatable. I know you're, you're thinking of things that you think didn't niche and launched very successfully. A good example might be Facebook, but it's not true. Facebook launched in Harvard University and it proved its value proposition that way. So very important to understand that niching is not optional for a startup. It is necessary. So let's get into the agenda. The agenda first is to talk about market entry strategy and positioning. And, and positioning is not the same. We have a separate segment on positioning that you may have seen already. And positioning is sort of the, the value in the mind of the consumer and the brand and all those sorts of things. Whereas a market entry strategy is a broader concept using all of the issues of the business model. Number two, we're going to study the biggest fail of all time, debatably, for lack of a good market entry strategy when everything else was really strong. They raised $200 million. You use their technology today, and you've probably never heard of the company, uh, but they invented many of the underlying foundational concepts that drive our explosion in telecommunications and apps and just generally in technology today. Number three, we're going to take the five steps to designing a 100% product launch success strategy or plan. And, and this can be guaranteed by using all the tools well in the CEO bootcamp because essentially we're testing everything as we go. We're not building based on a theory or what's in an engineer's mind or a founder's mind. We're validating along the way before we invest and build a lot of the product. And you'll find out that that's one of the reasons this, this biggest fail happened. They did not have a market entry strategy and an understanding of many of the business issues that ultimately killed them. Number four, we'll talk a little about qualitative research. And uh, five, specialization in niching in more detail. And number six, how many choices are there or should there be for a buyer? Next, we'll talk about number five, which is about specialization and niching, as I referred to a little earlier. And then number six is how many choices should you give a buyer? This is important for both positioning and market entry strategy. And there's some strong psychology that's also counterintuitive here that could save you your company in understanding it and give you a much more rapid launch and, and growth rate. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the very high failure rate among startups. The fact of the matter is, and obviously there's varying data and research, but somewhere between 80 and probably 85% of startups fail today. And they fail primarily because they don't validate their products. You may have seen my ebook on this that looked at the research uh, compiled by Statistica and Crunchbase or others, 
and Kauffman Foundation, which is a nonprofit in the startup space that tries to enhance uh, education, has done a lot of research on this too and validates the same kind of information. But the point I wanted to make here, and the point in my ebook, is that the reasons given for failure are not at all true. They're the perception of the failed company and the founder answered basically on why they thought they failed. But typically, that was a symptom and not the root cause of their failure. The root cause, and when you add up all of these things, almost all of them come from a lack of using one of the tools in the boot camp or validating your product along the way. Also, they're overconfident in, in what they think matters. We don't want to build products based on our image and vision alone without hearing what the customer thinks. Because at the end of the day, what we think doesn't matter. It's what the prospect or buyer thinks and what they're going to pay for that matters most. So we've got to flush out our internal biases and make sure they're not overriding it. And I know and I've seen so many instances where this set of false beliefs, ignoring all the empirical data or not doing the validation at all, is what kills the company long term. So it doesn't really matter what you think. We've got to get empirical evidence from the marketplace about what the prospect thinks. Number four, another common reason, instead of the ones given here in this research, is that they think selling will over Home, the objections of the buyer, and, and they're so stuck on what the product should be because of the vision in their mind, they don't listen to the marketplace. And, and this is true in raising capital, too. Often people will beat their head against the, the wall and they'll do a hundred pitches and they'll get no capital. And instead of learning and taking the information and feedback they get and integrating it in, and potentially, most likely, uh, varying or pivoting their plan a little bit, they'll wind up continuing to sell what they believe in uh, right into bankruptcy. So a very common problem. Number five, they, they think uh, they, they try to sell an offer too early. In other words, an offer is very specific about pricing and what you get and the bundling and you know everything you're going to get. And doing that should really be done almost last in the product launch process because you've got to do, as you've learned already, the market research, the competitive intelligence, and build your MVP. But we're going to talk about mostly in this segment how you have to test as you go before you build the product. You don't want to commit until you've got some validation, and that's going to eliminate the bulk of that 80% plus of startups that fail. So don't try to think or don't believe that selling will get you over these things. You've got to listen 80% of the time and talk 20% of the time so that you're getting information from the world and your marketplace and the universe and you're adjusting before you go out and build your product. Validating an idea is actually quite easy and often quick. The hardest part is finding people you trust who are good prospects for that. But companies fail every day because they don't do that validation process. Now, this Venn diagram shows kind of at the top level the three circles that are necessary to build a successful company. And that little dot in the middle, the overlap of all three, is the, the area that a business will be successful in. In other words, there's an overlap of what the people want and, and demand, what the business model will make work, and that's a big thing. We're going to get into that in a lot of detail. And what technology is feasible today, and you'll see in the little case study that we do that the technology was not yet feasible for what that company was promising. And that was one of the main reasons for their failure, although their, their market entry had to be adjusted by that knowledge, and they didn't realize that. So by business, I mean all of these things, the price, the cost to produce the margins, the marketing strategy and how you're going to sell it, the selling strategy, which is a little different in terms of 
lower level down in distribution and uh, sales messaging, the brand that you create, uh, and the tactical level stuff of the implementation. So that's what I mean when I say the business formula. And this is beyond most people's understanding because it's always understated by people who don't understand it in the mass media. And, you know, even professors in universities sometimes have no clue what's going on here because they've never launched a product in the real world and they don't understand uh, the need for iteration and testing and validation because academics tend to run on theory and what's in the book and, and not be quite as practical and street smart and rapidly adjusting based on the real world. So it's one of the reasons why I say the CEO boot camp is better than an MBA because this is all proven with empirical data and experience over decades. I mean, my 30 years, as well as the ideas incorporated from over a thousand books that I've read in my career into this that have decades worth of uh, success behind them. So I mean, when I say business, everything here. Now, does this sound familiar? Of course, it's about the vision. Right. I mean, if you think back to the first segment or one of the first segments you should have taken, it was our definition of a vision, which is so much more broad than what people normally think of as the vision. Normally, they think of it as a product position or a product offering in the marketplace as compared to what else is there. But for a business to work, you need sales, marketing, finance, product development, operations, and all of that to be aligned at the strategic level as well as at the tactical level, which means the talent of management and leadership being applied to integrate and get the team rowing in the same direction. And then if you remember, the center of the vision pie diagram is the core, and that's meant to be what does not change. Uh, Jim Collins refers to that in the book Good to Great as the hedgehog concept. In other words, it's what you're putting a stake in the ground and, and saying our company's purpose, our company's why is to be the best in the world at this thing. And so you can confidently in, invest in that thing. And even if you pivot the business, you can use your investment and in your technology or whatever you've built because you haven't changed the core purpose of the business. You've just changed, you know, the, something in the sales or the marketing or the strategy or the target market or whatever. So it's all about vision, and, and you could almost replace that circle of business here with the vision pie. 